Hello and welcome to Markplex where there are a large number of tutorials and programs for TradeStation Easy Language. And one of the Markplex Gold Pass members asked me to do a video about Tutorial 15. Now, Tutorial 15 was written quite a while ago and uh, probably do some things differently, but I think there are still some uh, important lessons to learn. And uh, essentially, the program uh, in Tutorial 15 was looking at three uh, pivots, two pivot highs and a pivot low. And if we just go to a chart as an example, you can see we had a most recent pivot high, a most recent pivot low, then a second most recent pivot high. And we're basically comparing the length of this line uh, rather the, uh, the vertical length of this line to the vertical length of this line, uh, calculating the ratio and seeing if that represents a Fibonacci level, or at least it is within the tolerance of a Fibonacci level. So let me go into the program and hopefully just explain a little more of how we do this. Now we won't look at the inputs and the arrays for the moment, but uh, let's just start here. And uh, the first thing we have is we create an array which stores the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six Fibonacci levels in in the zero, one, two, three, four, five positions. Having done that, we then look and determine if there have been any pivot points. And this is just using the standard TradeStation pivot function. If you're unfamiliar with this, you can uh, look at definition of pivot. But essentially what we do here, we're looking for the most recent, indicated by this one here, low pivot, the most recent high pivot, and the second most recent high pivot. And the minus one represents a low pivot and one represents a high pivot. Now, overall, we're going to be storing the references for the lines that we're going to draw in another um, array named pivots. And this is actually 100 or 101 elements and uh, has four columns. The four columns are going to be the, uh, in each case, we're going to draw a line between the first high pivot and the low pivot, the second high pivot and the low pivot. And we're also going to be drawing two text objects. So let's just uh, jump into the calculation a little more. What we're saying is value, value three is equal to one. Then that means we've had the most recent um, high pivot. We're going to check that the, uh, the pivot bar, that that high pivot occurred ago is equal to right strength. In other words, the pivot has just occurred. We're also going to make sure that the uh, the, the high pivot occurred fewer bars ago than the, the low pivot and the second most recent high pivot occurred a greater number of bars ago. Then what we're going to do is if the high pivot, the second high pivot price is not the same as the low pivot price, we're going to calculate a pivot diff. And this is the thing we're going to uh, compare with the Fibonacci ratios. And what I've done is I've just created uh, an image here to try and explain it a little bit more. And the calculation is O pivot price H1 minus O pivot price L1 times by 100 divided by O pivot price H2 minus O pivot price L1. We do the calculation for this particular case and the answer comes out at 62. Is that close enough or not to uh, a pivot ratio. Well, there's a pivot ratio at 61.8. And uh, what we do is we calculate whether it is within a certain tolerance of that pivot ratio. And you'll see here that it has to be between 63.036 and 60.564. And it is. So what we do, having create, uh, calculated the pivot diff, we then need to see, is it close to any of these uh, pivot ratios that we were just looking at a moment ago. So what we go, what we do is we go through the array and in each case we do the comparison. When we find one or if we find one, we then uh, draw the pivot lines. Uh, 
Now, in actual fact, as I mentioned, we're storing the pivot lines in another array, which we loop around. We fill it up to 100 elements. Then we go back and or 101 elements. So it gets to um, a pivot count of 100. Then it loops back again, so that's 101 elements. And uh, in each case, should there be a reference stored in the uh, array at that particular point, uh, then we need to delete that before adding a new one. So each time we increment the, uh, the piv, piv count to make sure that we look at the next element in the array the next time we go around. If there is an element in the array for that particular line or for, for the previous line, then we must delete that, delete the line before we add the new line. And we do that for the first line, for the second line, and also for the two text values. Uh, the other thing to note, the text values we're drawing the first one is going to be equal to the pivot ratio that we're closest to. And uh, that can be found here. Text new, um, date of the pivot, the low pivot bar ago, time, low pivot bar, price, low pivot. And then we just simply take the the actual pivot value that it is closest to. And then the second text value is we calculate the tolerance, which is equal to the actual value. In other words, it's going back here, the value that we calculated, the actual value minus the, uh, the closest Fibonacci level, and we include that information on the chart. Anyway, I hope uh, this has been of use to you. If you have any more questions, then please feel free to email me. Thank you.